How you doing, sis? So the brother this morning brought out a point, right? In terms of he's, when he's talking about pants, right? When it was first introduced. He says it was introduced by a sister named Amelia Bloomberg. Olivia Bloomberg. Now, when you understand the history of pants, pants wasn't around until the, what? The late, the early 20th century. Pants is a, a sign of feminism because it wasn't not to the 20th century that was introduced by European. Give me drama 22 verse 5 real quick again. And then, people told you it was called trousers at one point. They ain't like the brother brought up in the 20s and 30s. Then you have World War II that came up about. So the women start wearing trousers to replace the men at work. While the men was at work, the women was at home doing men's work in the factories. So now, let's go up to date. Read that real quick. Now, the 1960s. Tell me about the 1960s. What was happening during that time period? Okay, about people, right? Then they come up, what happened? Anybody can tell me what was happening during the 1960s? Riots for food. What people was rioting? Black people, right? What they call it? Starts with a C. The civil, come on, you don't know the 60s? The civil rights movement? Come on, we know history, right? Okay, when the civil rights movement, we had Martin Luther King rise up. We went to march with the Washington, D.C. You had the Black Panther movements. You have all black activists rose up. Now, during the 1960s, another thing was introduced. There was a second wave of feminism. Guess who else was introduced during the 1960s? Pants. Pants was commercialized. It was placed on the market in the 1960s as well. Give me 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3. So 1960s, there was a second wave of feminism. The 1960s was also when pants was introduced. The 1960s to the 1980s was also when you have a CIA agent, a CIA agent infiltrating the Black Panthers movements with black fe feminism. And that's how they captured the minds of our people. So when we tell women to stop wearing pants, it's a form of feminism. If we wear pants, you actually go against the black family. Because why? They say he that wears the pants, the person that wears the pants in the household does what in the household? Rules the household. Give me that. Second Corinthians 11 verse 3. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve. Uh, but I fear. So Paul is speaking to the Israelites. He said, but I fear by what? By any means. But I fear by any means what? As the serpent beguiled Eve. As the serpent beguiled Eve. The serpent in the garden was not actual snake. That's Christianity. That's Greek philosophy. The serpent is what? Another word for what? A wicked, treacherous, treacherous man. So a person that's full of deceit. Now in the garden of Eden, there was a man that actually deceived Eve. Read. Through his subtlety. Through his trickery. So that man in the garden came to Eve with trickery, cunningly, deceitfully. Read. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So your mind should be corrupted through the simplicity that is in Christ. Now give me Genesis chapter 3. Let's go back into the Garden of Eden. So those of you that don't know what's going on today in Newark, New Jersey in 2016. Pants is a form of feminism. They use pants to put a woman's spirit because in 1919, you had a Puerto Rican woman try to go out in public with trousers. Guess what they did to her? They locked her up. Wearing pants was actually a crime. They locked up. Pants, even in the U.S. Senate, they didn't even, women were not able to, were supposed to wear pants even in the Senate until the year 2000. There's a lot of history behind women wearing pants. In the islands, there's, there's no such thing as women wearing pants. But, there's another thing behind pants. Read. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. So beast is just being the reference to men. So the serpent, that wicked, treacherous man, was more cunning than any beast. Let's bring it up to today's standards. We look at the so-called white man. Is he not a cunning person? Is he not deceitful? Did he not deceive the earth with trickery? Show him that what? Christ is white? Show him that God is white? Show him that the Jews are white? Show him that the laws of God are done away with? Show him that what, women can wear pants? Men can wear skirts? That's a serpent, a wicked, treacherous, trickerous person. We. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. So this man was more subtle, more cunning than any man in the field, just like the so-called white man. He is more cunning than any nation on this earth. Read. Which the Lord God had made. Uh -huh. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, ye 
should not eat of every tree. So God said to the woman, yay, shall you not eat of every tree? Meaning, shall you not, the trees actually make reference to actual trees. Now it's going to go more in depth. Read. Of the garden, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. So we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Meaning the, free, the trees that God planted for us to eat. Read. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. Uh oh. Now this is talking about something specific. But the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Read. God has said, ye shall not eat of it. So I want to show you. It's not talking about an apple. It's talking about philosophy that the serpent brought to eat. You gotta get out of Christianity. We're showing you that we're living the garden once again. We're bringing the garden of Eden back into 2016 right. in America. Right. Read. So that, that fruit was not an actual fruit, an apple that Christianity teaches. That fruit was going to philosophy, right. idolatry. Right. Right. Eve accepted the idolatry of the serpent in the garden. That wicked, treacherous man. Read. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Neither shall you learn the philosophy that that man was bringing to you, lest you should die. Because what? The God says, the wages of sin is death. So if Eve was going to learn that philosophy, what she was going to put to death. He. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Wait a minute. The, wait a minute. the serpent said unto the woman, the wicked, treacherous man said unto Eve, the black woman, you shall not surely die. Just like today. What does the white man say in Christianity? All the laws of God are done away with. You should surely inherit the kingdom of God. You live by, we live by grace. And not by, wait, what do you say? We live not by sight, but grace. The grace of the Lord. This is the same serpent doing the same thing in a garden of Eden as doing the same thing in America. You say you guys should not surely die. You can go clubbing. You can be a homosexual. You can be a transvestite. You can be a lesbian. You can eat pork. You can eat shrimp. You can eat crab. You can women can have sex with women. Men can have sex with men. This is the same serpent doing the same thing, saying you should not surely die. Free. For God doth know that in the day you eat the love, God knows the day that you learned the what the philosophy that the serpent was bringing to Eve. Read. Then your eyes shall be open. You shall be open to good and evil. This evil is only supposed to keep the murder commandment. Read. And ye shall be as God. Wait, and you shall be as what? And ye shall be as God. Wait, this is a problem. Who is the serpent talking to? Who's the serpent talking to? Eve. Eve, right? Eve. So, why is the serpent saying to Eve, you shall be as what? Ye shall be as God. Was Eve a God? Who was a God? Who was a God from the beginning? Huh? Who's the first creation? Adam, give wisdom Psalm 2 verse 23 real quick. Show you that the man was a God on this earth. The man was made in the image of God. And who's the woman made in the image of? The man. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 23. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 23. Yeah. For God created man to be immortal. God created man to be immortal. Read. And made him to be an image of his own eternity. So the man was made to be an image of his own eternity. Hold that. Give me Psalms 82 verse 6. Yeah. To show you who is the God that was supposed to be in the garden from the beginning of time. But the serpent said to the black woman, or the wicked treacherous man said to the black woman, you shall be as gods. Read. Psalms 82 verse 6. Uh -huh. I have said, ye are gods. God says to the man, ye are what? Ye are gods. Uh -huh. And all of you are children uh -huh. of the most high. Uh -huh. But ye shall die like men. See? We were gods. The black man at the beginning of time was a god. Right. But we what die like men. We get shot down on the streets by pop cops. We game bang against, against each other. Black on black crime, stick up kids, STD, all these things were dying. Why? Because we're not keeping the commandments of God. So now get me back to Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 21. 3. So 23. So who was a god from the beginning? The man, right? So read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2. Verse 23, uh -huh. for God created man to be immortal. God created man. The black man was created to be immortal. We were created to die. This body that we have is not our real body. We're going to get a real body when the black Messiah Christ returns. Right. A known eternity. Guess what? God is a black man according to the Bible. Right. We are right. in face image. Like we are warning here, God 
God has one here. Right. We love brown skin, God has brown skin. Right. We talk loud, God talks loud. Right. We were made in his image. We, yeah. nevertheless, huh? through envy of the devil. Uh oh, nevertheless, even though we were made as God, through envy of the devil, the woman envying the white man, the woman envying that serpent in the garden. She said, wait a minute, he has all this knowledge. My man is already a God, so let me be like my man. To the end of the, end of the devil, what happened? Came death! To the black woman came death. So now go back to um, um, Genesis chapter 3, which says, and ye shall be as gods. So nevertheless, the envy of the woman came death. So it's showing you what's happening today. What do, what do we live in? Bible prophecy. We are living the days of the Garden of Eden once again. But the, what, the modernized in the Garden of Eden. Read. Genesis chapter 3 verse, verse 5 uh -huh. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof Then your eyes shall be opened uh -huh. And ye shall be as God What's the problem with that? Who was the God says? Was the woman a God? Who was the God? The man Who was the God brothers? Man. The man was the God right? And the woman came for the man So that's why So what was that called? Eve being a God and Adam being a God What is that called? 50-50. Black feminism. That's what the feminist movement was about. A put a black woman on top uh, as equal as a black man. Having receiving equal wages in the workforces. Being equal in terms of pants. The man can wear pants, so the woman can wear pants. The man can lead, so the woman can lead. That's why you have a what? A, a, a uprising of black feminism or you have Beyonce. Girls, girls, we rule this world. The independent woman. Now give me back to Deuteronomy 22 verse 5 again. So that's why this little law that we we think is very minimal is extremely heavy, sis. Right. Because there's a spirit and a philosophy that goes with pants. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. The woman. God says the woman shall not wear what? Shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Why? God says the woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man because what type of spirit does pants put on a woman, sis? A man's spirit. You can surely be as gods. You can be equal to a man. 50-50. There's no such thing as two heads on a body. There can only be one head. Two heads is a monster. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a woman become a homo, a sissy boy. Put on a woman's garment with walking in and damn um and high, damn high heels. high heels. Walk around my little princess. That's the spirit that's going on in America. Role reversal. They try to reverse the roles. Why? To the to cripple the black family. You gotta understand. With that movement, with well, pants and feminism coupled together, that destroyed the black family. And that's how that's how all the civil rights, the civil rights you had the Black Panther movement, and all black activists fell. Because why? The man is only as strong as his unit. And that unit is his family. So that's why, when we bring out, sis, stop wearing pants. There's a, there's a destructive spirit behind it. Read. For all that do so, a woman wearing pants, and a man wearing a dress is what? Our abomination. Our abomination. God hates that thing. There's a judgment. We want you to know, there's a judgment. We're not playing. We come out here to show you love according to the Bible. When you make excuses, you're welcoming death into your mind, into your, in your life. Give me um, Proverbs 8, verse 36 now. We're going to say, when you wear pants, you actually hate what God created you to be, sis. God did not create you to be the person you are right now. God created you to reflect the scriptures. You got to come back. Just like all the men got to come back to what God created us. Read. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 36. Uh -huh. But he that sinneth against me, he that sinneth against God, a man wear dresses, a woman wear pants, a man walk around shaved beards. Read. What is his own soul? You know your own soul. You do your own soul dirty. Because God promised us immortality, eternity on this earth. You do yourself dirty. Read. All they that hate me, all they that hate God. So there's a sister here early that said, the brother asked, do you love God? And she said, yes. But do their actions, do you love God? Do your actions. 
No, it's impossible to love somebody if you don't show forth actions. All that that do what? All that that love that hate me. Love death. All they that hate God do not keep God's commandments. Love death. Love death. Give me Romans 12 verse 2. So that's why, now give me actually Revelation 12 verse 9. No. Yeah, 12 verse 9 real quick. So sis, have you been deceived? Brother, have we been deceived? Have we not all been deceived? We all been deceived. Look on that sign. You're supposed to be the people from that side. But you became the people on the opposite side. You forgot who you are. So what? If you forgot who you if you forget your nationality, you're bound to forget your love, your heritage, your laws, your culture. It was a process. It was a destructive process. We Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. So that old dragon. That old that devil caught with that old serpent that was in the garden. It's the same serpent back today. You gotta know what's going on in this world. The same serpent is doing the same thing to you now. He deceived you, sis. We. Which deceiveth the whole world. Wait a minute. What did that serpent do? Which deceiveth the whole world. What person, what nation on this earth is deceiving the whole world? What nation, brother? Who? Who? What, okay, what nationality are these people? Caucasians. You see that? That old serpent with the seed of thought, that devil, God's calling the devil. That's the Bible says. Right, right. Which did what? Which the seed of the whole world. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.